What's up guys, Set Talk back here with another video and today I've got a full white door 7.1 iOS review on the iPhone 2G. Now this isn't actually iOS 7, it's just a custom IPSW which is actually iOS 3.1.3 but I'm going to be doing a review on it today as it does add some extra features and um, this idea was given to me by the iDevice Archive, so go subscribe to him, link in the description. Also, if you want to know how to get this on your iPhone, my last video was on this. I'll leave a link in the description on that video, too. So, let's get started on this review. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is the app similarity to iOS 7. Unfortunately, I do not have an iOS 7 device with me right now, but I do have an iOS 11. And it really hasn't changed that much since iOS 7 except for like the App Store and the iTunes Store as you can see right there. But so let's look at um, the messages which is down here. So if you look at them they are very very similar. Try to put them side by side. So that is the similarity between the messages. Now the iTunes icon has changed a little bit. The iTunes is red as you can see or the music not iTunes excuse me so in iOS 8 9 10 and 11 it's white in iOS 7 it's red the settings icon has not changed much it's a little bolder in iOS 11 but it's been just like this through iOS 10 as well the calculator is I believe the calculator is like that in iOS 10 they got a new icon for it in iOS 11 Let's see, did we have the clock? Yes, we have the clock. Unfortunately, if you look at iOS 11, it's actually moving very slowly. Well, it used to. Yeah, it's moving. If you look at the red little um, pointer, I don't know what to call it. Hand. Hand. That's the word. So this one, the hand does not move. No hands move on this one, unfortunately. So, that is about as much app similarity as I can look at. Wait, is iBooks on here? No, iBooks is not on here. We do have the contacts application has also changed. We haven't really looked at that. Here's the difference in contacts. There's like two little people in it here on iOS 11. And there's only one person in it on iOS 7. Now, I do not have City Go on this as iOS 11 has not been jailbroken. So, it doesn't really look any different. YouTube has changed because, well, this is outdated. This is iOS 3 just with a, basically with an iOS 7 skin on it, even though it is still custom IPSW. This is the stock YouTube app. It is still not supported even with this wide or update. This is the up-to-date YouTube version. Um, so YouTube is still not usable on this device. So that is the app icon similarity. Okay, so now that we've compared the apps, let's compare the camera to the new iOS 11. The reason I'm doing a comparison is so I can show you all the new features of this IPSW. So obviously the frame rate doesn't get any better. That is a real-time frame rate, as you can see. <laughs> Um, this one is a whole lot better. Sorry if I'm not really getting the right picture or in the view. But, so, this camera has all these different settings. Every one of these. This, now with this new IPSW, does have video. So we're going to test that out. And it takes you to this new app, which you will not find in the home screen. So all you have to do, I'm pretty sure you hold it sideways, I guess, because the whole app is sideways. So you just hit the little record button. Hey guys, this is Tech Talk. So this is what it looks like. I'll show you the video in a second. Okay, so it's finished recording. Now we just click this little button here in the corner, and then it'll be right here. So here's the beautiful video quality as you can see. It doesn't even fill the whole screen. So that is what the video looks like on this device. Not very good. And if you could hear the audio quality well, that is not very well either or very good. I should say the audio quality is terrible. It sounds terrible. It sounds like it's using the microphone for the phone because it's not made to use take videos. So the, the video is not very good on this phone. Now let's look at messages. 
So unfortunately, you have to have a SIM card for this device to use messages because there is no SMS that I know of. But I'm actually going to look right now in the settings and see if there is SMS options or sign-in options on your iMessages. No, there is not. So, you cannot use messages unless you somehow have an activated iPhone 2G, which isn't even supported. Now, we do have an app switcher in this, but it doesn't really work that well because they're not really still open. See, as you can see, these two apps are totally glitching out here. But see, you can close them out. Well, maybe. Yeah, you just drag it up. It's a very choppy animation, as you can see. You kind of have to hold on it and then drag and swipe, just like that. But it does have an app switcher. I don't think there's actually still apps running in the background, but it does have an app switcher. So now let's compare the calendar application. As you can see, it does say the first on both of these. It is December the first today. So let's just go ahead and open them up and see what the difference is. So this is obviously iOS 11, but actually, I'm not very familiar with the calendar application, but you can change the date up here just like you can up here on this one. So today is Friday, December the 1st, 2017. And you can, there is a button today on both of those. And you have day, month, and list. So it is very, very similar to iOS 11, but it's not the same, obviously. I'm sorry, I don't have an iOS 7 device to actually compare this to. The Maps application is like just like the iOS 10. So the iOS 11, as you can see, has changed a little bit. It's showing Apple Park, if you look carefully, if you know what that is. That little ring around it is Apple Park. This one is just showing some random road, as far as I know. So that is those two apps. Um, comparison. Now I have contacts on this device so I'm not going to show you that but I'll show you the contacts on this iPhone 2G. There are no contacts. You can sort them though by scrolling through here. Also I forgot to mention, I'm glad that pulled up, you do get a control center. It does work. It's kind of choppy as far as brightness goes because iOS 3 didn't even have a control center. iOS 6 didn't have a control center. So you can actually toggle these on and off. So I just turned it off and as you can see it's not connected to Wi-Fi anymore. So, or at least according to that little, you know, thing at the top. It may still be, it may just be an animation, who knows. But see, now it is back on up there. Also, we can turn on airplane mode and it stays connected to Wi-Fi. We can turn on Bluetooth. We can turn on Do Not Disturb, and it says, sorry, this function is currently not available. So apparently you can't turn on Do Not Disturb. That's kind of pointless. I haven't really looked in the clocks application, so let's see how this looks. So it actually looks very, very, very similar to iOS 10s. So you get the hours and minutes. You can change the ringtone. This is just like iOS 6. You can do stopwatches. So you can use a stopwatch, you can set alarms, and you have these different world clocks that you can add. So that is those applications. Now compared. let's compare the calculator. So it is very similar to iOS 6 from what it looks like. And in iOS 11, this is a glitch. I'm not sure if it was fixed in this latest update. I think it was. 1 plus 2 plus 3. Nope. 1 plus 2 plus 3 does not equal 23. For your information, it equals 6. And when I hit the equal button, it made it 24. So apparently if I keep hitting it, it keeps making it go up. So you have to type it really, really slowly to get the answer 6. This one, you can go 1 plus 2 plus 3 and get the right answer. This one, if you do it that fast, 1 plus, oh, sorry, 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 24. This one you can do it as fast as you want. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. So, the calculator is definitely better than iOS 11.1.1's calculator. I thought they fixed it. Actually, I think they fixed it in iOS 11.1.2, but I'm waiting on the jailbreak, so I'm staying on this firmware. So, that is the calendar, I mean, not calendar, calculator application comparison for you today. Now let's compare the App Store application and possibly the iTunes Store. 
if you saw on my iPhone 2G 2017 review, iTunes just crashed. It didn't even load. So we'll see if this IPS now will you fixes it. So first we're gonna start with Apple Store. I mean App Store. So as you as you can see, there is a home. Well, actually that one's called the day. So we have this little weird home screen on this one. I uh, do not really like that. You have your downloads, categories, and search. If you search, let's search for YouTube. This video is going on YouTube. We have to have YouTube, right? So, I'll be back whenever this loads. I'm sure it'll take a century. Okay, so I've literally been waiting like two minutes. This has been loaded like forever. This loaded like immediately. This one's still loading. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that out because I don't feel like keeping on waiting. I'm pretty sure iTunes will crash, but we're gonna try it anyway, the iTunes store. So let's try it on both of these just for a comparison. This one might or might not crash, we'll see. Be interesting if that one crashed but it shouldn't. Sorry about the background noise. Our dog is barking her head off. And iTunes has crashed on this one just like I said it might. Ha, I was right, people. Okay, so iTunes does not load. App Store does not load, or if it does, it takes a century to load. Literally more like five minutes, probably, but still. So App Store takes forever to load. So that is my comparison of the App Store and iTunes Store. Now let's look at the weather application. So, as you can see, um, the temperatures are completely different. That's because they're set for different um, locations. But it's actually still very similar. This one you just scroll down to see all this stuff. This one you scroll to the side to see it looks like different areas that is a good feature they should add to this I'm not sure if it is added and I just don't know how to use the weather app or what but the um this is very similar to iOS 6 because I do have an iOS 6 device so the weather app for what I can tell works pretty good it looks like the next thing I just now noticed was this thing does not have a news app anywhere this news app right there not that one the pink one this one doesn't have a news app anywhere to be found on the screen okay now let's compare safari so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it and i believe i had jailbreak me up on this one last because i was still trying to get it to work because the jailbreak this one comes with is not very good or it could be the exact same as ios 3 jailbreak i'm not sure so let's just go ahead and do a little speed test comparison of apple.com so in three two one this one's gonna take centuries more not centuries it actually will probably load it because it has loaded before or at least this top bar right here see what i'm talking about we'll just wait until it's done Okay, so this iPhone 2G has still not loaded it. It's been at least like a minute by now. It's still loading. It's almost done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's stuck there. It's not moving at all. So, Safari is pretty slow. It does actually load Google.com, believe it or not. Um, so that is my safari comparison on these two okay so the one thing that i didn't review i don't know how i forgot this is settings this is like the biggest change in it and i'll show you what it is so we have push fixer and white door settings you have to apparently pay for push fixer so i'm just going to show you what the white door settings are there is actually a siri which we're going to try out in a minute you have to turn it on and click apply changes i did not do that earlier it says this may take a while so i guess i'll just speed through this part and be back when it's done doing that. Okay, so it's done. I'm not sure if it resprung. I didn't actually see anything happen. So let's go into settings and see if Sara is on. Actually, no, we're going to do it the fast way and just see if it works or not. Oh, would you look at that? It works. It works. Okay, so let's try it for real. Also, it does add assistive touch, which 
This phone is being very slow right now. Okay. So we do have assistive touch also. It turned that on when I turned Siri on for whatever reason. So I'll just go ahead and show you that. You can turn up the volume and you can lock it and go home. Oh, you get that new volume HUD that everybody hates. So let's try Siri. What's the weather? Okay, so apparently she's going to be silent. Don't know why. Oh, I heard something. Hey, what's going on, Siri? Yeah, um, I'm not sure how um, working this is. I'm going to try one more thing. What's the weather? Okay, so you do have... Siri called Sara on this firmware, but it does not actually work. How funny, right? Okay, so that is my review of Siri and settings on this firmware. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Should you upgrade to this firmware, I would definitely not say you should, unless you just like want to brag to your friends that you have iOS 7 on an iPhone 2G. But other than that, it's really not worth it. I mean, it does come with a few extra settings, and it does come with Cydia, which is not very useful, and Terminal, which I'm not entirely sure what it does. I haven't really tried it out yet. Didn't want to mess anything up. But is it worth it? I would not say yes, because it's just a lot of pain just to upgrade to it and then to decide you don't like it and downgrade back to iOS 3.1.3. But it is still kind of cool to have it on your iPhone. I personally like iOS 3.1.3 better on this. It is a little faster, I would say. We haven't actually looked for a spotlight. Okay, no spotlight. Okay, so thanks for watching this video, guys. Please leave a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Peace.